just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Elizabeth, Captive Princess, starring Ann Baxter. The other day, I visited a friend of mine who was in the hospital. He has often teased me in the past about my enthusiasm for greeting cards. But when I walked into his room, know what he was doing? Uh-huh. Sitting up in bed with get well cards strewn all over the covers, chuckling to himself as he went over each one. Look at this one, Frank. Wasn't that nice of Miss Johnson to send me a card? Well, I'll bet I haven't said more than good morning to her in all the years she's been in our office. And imagine old Joe sending me a card about playing golf. You know, they must know me better than I thought they did. A lot of the cards I've received seem like they were expressly written for me. If you've ever been sick or watched a sick person enjoy the cards he receives, then you know how important they are. And when you choose a Hallmark card, you can always find one that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. Whether it's a gay and humorous one or a sweet and sentimental one, you'll find that every Hallmark card is designed to carry your thoughts straight to the hearts of your friends and give their hearts a lift. Because Hallmark cards do this so well, you'll notice more and more that people of good taste instinctively look for that Hallmark on the back of each card. That familiar Hallmark which tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Margaret Irwin's Elizabeth, Captive Princess, starring Anne Baxter. The Princess Elizabeth is now a prisoner in the Palace of Whitehall. While Queen Mary debates what shall be done with her half-sister, the Earl of Sussex and Bishop Gardiner and others of the Queen's Council question the royal captive, hour after hour, day after day. Enough, please. I have answered fully and fairly. My lady, you have answered nothing. I have spoken with Sir Thomas Wyatt in the Tower, and he accuses you of the rebellion. My Lord Bishop, I am young in years and in the ways of the world. Yet I know your trick. You put words into Sir Thomas' mouth. Confess, madam, and you will be forgiven. Yes, and then beheaded. Your grace, the queen herself swears that you are against her marriage to the Spanish king. You are against the crown. Say rather that I am for England, as I hope you all are. The people have had enough of strife and blood. So much too much that they call my sister Bloody Mary. Hear you? She speaks against the queen. Lord Bishop Gardiner, look to how you treat me. I am still royalty. King Henry's blood flows in my veins, and I may yet be queen, and you may yet to the scaffold. Oh, my lady, I... I crave your pardon, your oh, grace. My lady Elizabeth. Lord Sussex. I am an old man, and not callous of heart. It grieves me that I should be hard upon one so young and fair. But the queen commands. She orders... She commands what? She commands you to the tower. Then there is no hope. No. The Tower of London is the tomb of hope. Well, for this journey there need be no packing. But Lord Sussex, may I take your arm? Ashley. Yes, madam. It is Monday. Uh, perhaps. No. No, I think it is Tuesday. Uh, it well may be. But is it day or night? <laughs> they are the same in this place. Mm, and yet there is a sun and a moon and men and women laughing and flowers speaking. <laughs> Come now, no tears. Let us think of the young soldier, the brave one who escorted us here. Ah, the guard who wept at the sight of you. And then threw down his arms and would not close the door tower upon you. He cried out, long live Elizabeth. He was my friend. You have many friends, Your Grace. The reason my sister fears me. My lady, be quiet. Elizabeth. Well, what kind of jailer is this? No jailer. A fellow prisoner. And once playmate of your childhood. Robin Dudley. You smile and frown in the same moment. We were once children together, yes, but your father was Northumberland, enemy to me and my sister. And the cause of my imprisonment. But now he is dead, and soon we may be. Tonight, let us dine together in my quarters. No, my lady. This is some trap, perhaps. 
What prisoner wanders about the tower with a fistful of keys? No one can do anything with money in this place, except escape from it. Elizabeth, my table is already spread and I have a lute. We shall play and sing and dance. Oh, play and sing and dance. What are those? I've almost forgotten to remember. Then let me help you. Your grace, it is dangerous. Yes. Dangerous to live, even dangerous to avoid danger. Elizabeth, say you will. Yes. Yes, my Robin, yes. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth. Oh, Robin, Robin, this is madness. Two prisoners singing and dancing as though these stone walls were but a bower of flowers. And are they not? Where you are, my Elizabeth, flowers spring from stone. Robin, you mustn't. I may say what I please. What punishment would you threaten me? To the tower? You are only lonely. You've forgotten what women are. And I'm a poor reminder. My face is pale. I'm thin. And still beautiful. Your eyes are still those of a princess, and yet tender as a girl in love. I've known so little of love. But now? My Robin. My sweet Robin. You cry. It, it cannot be. Elizabeth. Our love is deadly. My kisses may send you to the scaffold. Then let it be. Life or death, I'd take them both from your hands. And you'd make them glorious. Oh, I must give you life as you've given me life. I thank you, dear Robin, for new hope. This darkness must pass. For you and for me and for England. Yes, I believe now that I shall live. And someday be queen. Someday. Then another kiss and be my queen now. Good night, dear Robin. Elizabeth. Good night until... Until, pray God, another night. <laughs> Good morning, madam. Her grace is at prayer. No, I'm done, my lord gardener. Tell me, sir, we heard bells ringing. Such ringing has penetrated even these stone walls. The city is in festival for the marriage of her majesty. So, I gain a new enemy, Philip the Spaniard. But do you come to tell me that? Your grace is to leave the tower. My lady. Oh, my lady. I feared this. The spies have reported last night... And now the price for one hour of happiness. Happiness? Here, madam. In this place? You will not harm him. Give me your word. Your meaning is beyond me. May it be so, but I doubt it. No, I will not go. Taylor, God, take her. No, oh, let me oh. stay. The tower is my own. Only here have I known love. Let me die near him. Ashley! Ashley! Oh, my lady. Oh, my dear poor lady. <laughs> None will harm you. We are alone. Now, is not Hampton Court better than the Tower? One place is as another to a prisoner, Your Majesty. I suppose. But if I were to pardon you, to set you free... Your Majesty. The rebel Sir Thomas Wyatt has made full exoneration of you in his plot. He speaks the truth. I know it now. There is another matter first. The Prince of Piedmont shall be your husband. I refused him once. And now you have learned wisdom. I would be in exile from England. Banished from our shores, yes. But alive and free. There is no life nor freedom for me away from England. You still think to be queen. You know I'm sick and may not live long. I pray that is not so. And that your marriage with Philip be long and happy. So happy, Your Majesty, that even your subjects will reap benefit. Oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. What is this you do to me? You stand like my conscience, mocking me. Perhaps because through me you see your country, which has suffered even more than I. You torture me no longer. I've given you your last chance and you defy me. Out of my sight. Chamberlain, remove her. What devil guards about her? Mom, my dear. Philip, send her away. 
You wished me to listen in secret. Now I must speak openly. Princess Elizabeth, I heard of. You heard too much! Enough to convince me, my dear. Your sister is your conscience, as you say. She speaks to you more truly than your jealous counselors. Lady Elizabeth, I have been told you are not my friend. Your Majesty, I am friend to those who are friend to England. As I am friend to Spain, and it is right. We cannot be traitors to the lands of our birth. My wife is English, and she must rule England for England alone. As I shall rule Spain for Spain alone. Then we could be friends. Good friends. So long as I am in this foreign land, I mean that we shall be. Philip! It is our wish, Elizabeth, that you should attend our court. You are our dear sister, and no longer prisoner. Your Majesty, I kneel. But not to you, nor to the Queen, but to the mercy God has shown me, and to the glorious future of England. James Hilton will return in a moment. When you select a card to send to a friend who is sick or having a birthday or starting a new job or getting married, how do you choose it? If you're like most people, first you look for a pleasing design, one that will properly reflect your good taste. That will bring added pleasure to the person receiving it. Then you read the message. If it contains the right words, if it sounds like you, that's the card you send. And that's exactly why the makers of Hallmark cards are so particular about the designs they create for Hallmark cards and the words that go inside. They know you want a card to represent you, your good taste in design, and your thoughts and feelings expressed in the right words. Yes, just as you dress up when you go calling, so the words on the card you send must represent you at your best. It's with this ideal, this extra understanding of the person-to-person -person message that Hallmark cards are made. That's why you can find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, the way you want to say it. Why that Hallmark on the back of a card means so much to both the sender and the receiver. That's why it has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Thanks, Ann Baxter, for being with us on the Hallmark Playhouse tonight, for your wonderful performance, and for giving us such a vivid insight into the personality of England's famous queen. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. You know, whenever I read or hear any story of court life, I always feel a little sorry for kings and queens of old. They, they were never sure just who was a friend. When you hear about them, you come to realize how important it is to have friends and how necessary a little thoughtfulness is in the world. That's why I'm especially fond of you Hallmark people and your fine Hallmark cards. Your whole business is built on the tradition of friendship and thoughtfulness. That's a very nice tribute, Anne, and we shall try to add to our tradition next week when we present Blanche Chenery Perrin's Rest and Be Thankful, a charming story of two women who search for peace and happiness far afield, only to find them close at home in the mountains of Wyoming. And as our star, we are very happy to welcome one of Hollywood's favorite actresses, Dorothy McGuire. May I remind you also that this is Red Cross Month, when the Red Cross seeks your help so that others can be helped all they are around. Remember, when you make your contribution to the Red Cross this year, you are defending your family, your community, your nation. So do give generously. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our score tonight was arranged for music of the period and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Ann Baxter may soon be seen co-starring with Glenn Ford in the 20th Century Fox production, Follow the Sun. The role of Queen Mary tonight was played by Lorene Tuttle. Constance Cavendish was Mrs. Ashley. Others in our cast were Ted DeCorsia, Ted Osborne, Whitfield Connor, Ben Wright, and Eric Snowden. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present the lovely young Hollywood star Dorothy McGuire in Rest and Be Thankful. And in weeks to follow, a great human interest story of the early days of the horseless carriage. And to commemorate Mother's Day, Gladys Hasty Carroll's A Man's Mother on the Hallmark Playhouse.
This is PBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.